What's up, Geminites? It's your boy, Gemin. I have a special guest with me today, Tom from Comic Tom 101. What's going on? What's going on, Geminites? We had a fun video ahead for you. Yeah, for sure, man. We're going to talk about the top 10 things that you want to avoid when you're buying high-end statues, like kind of like these up here. That's right, or like these ones over here, so... So stay tuned. They can't stand it. Comic flow, they can't stand it. I'm incredible, unforgettable. Something like Jim and Collectibles, A. I'm a Gemini and we get it right. We are making no spider bites. So we doing reviews and getting the views. Venom my ooze, look at a week. All right, guys, before we get started, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell and the like button. You're going to want to subscribe to the Comic Tom's channel as well because we have a giveaway going on right now. Tell them what it is, Tom. That's right. We have this Thor issue one that was actually sent from Cosmic Comics from South Africa. How cool is this variant? You're going to want to stay to the end of the video to find out how you're going to win this. Yeah, for sure. It's a Donny Cates store number one store exclusive from a whole other country. So stay tuned to the end. So you ready to jump into this list? Oh, my gosh, man. I actually am super pumped about getting into these different things to avoid when buying expensive statues and i'm actually hit you with some questions here because i've been wondering a lot of these things for quite some time and i want to hear your response to some of these don'ts that's why i wanted to bring you on so that we can uh i can have a co-host with me on this list so the first thing i'm going to talk about is when you first get into the statue collecting hobby you want to buy everything in sight everything that's nostalgic every cool statue you see you tend to buy everything quick, fast when you first get into this hobby. I agree. I mean, look at all these ones in front of me. These are all some of my favorite characters. Heck, I even have some of these tattooed on my body. I got to know, what were some of the statues that you bought right out the gate? So when I first got into the hobby, like many of us do, I just started buying like every franchise I ever loved. Like I started buying every uh, Marvel comic character that I thought the statue looked cool, every Street Fighter character, every Mortal Kombat character. And before you knew it, you had 60 statues and a lot of them you didn't love. You just kind of did too much too fast. And it could be a costly mistake when you're new into this hobby. So when you first started buying these statues aggressively, did you have any like connections with any of these particular characters? So that's actually leads us right into the next one. You want to make sure you're buying characters that you love, that you actually have a connection with. So you answer your question, no, a lot of them were like, okay, I need every Avengers now. I need to get a Hulk. I need a Cap. And then after a while, you realize, man, I don't really love Captain America, and I don't really want to keep this statue anymore. So you kind of want to make sure you really have a connection to the character. What characters in particular when you first started out that you were buying that then over time you realized, ah, that connection wasn't there enough. And eh, now you just want to get rid of it. I think Hulk comes to mind. At one time, I think I had like nine Hulk statues at once and I don't even like Hulk that much, but it was kind of like, oh, I definitely need this gladiator Hulk. I got to have Wolverine versus Hulk, man. That Hulk premium format looks good. The red Hulk, the gray Hulk. So I had all these Hulks and I'm like, man, I don't even, I'm not even a Hulk fan like that, but it, it was kind of one of those things where it's um, I was new to the hobby and the statues looked really cool. So I wanted to buy it. But at the end of the day, when you don't have that connection to a, a character, you end up not really wanting to keep it. And then you start learning the downfalls of trying to sell some of these expensive pieces. So what about these like insanely expensive and like just the hot statues of the month? You start seeing them starting to get reviewed all over the Internet. Is there like a particular time to buy statues more than others? Yeah, that's a great point. That's going to bring us into like the third thing. You want to avoid buying a statue when it's hot. And I'll give you a perfect example. Like I recently did a, a statue review for the XM Studios brown suit Wolverine. Now it's sold out. And now you're starting to see it on eBay for, you know, over retail. People are asking me, Jim, can you get me another brown Wolverine? And right now it's sold out. And you want to avoid buying over retail on eBay if you can. You want to practice a little bit of patience. Kind of wait for the hype to die down a little bit before you start spending a lot more money than you should. So when dealing in comics, a lot of the time we're doing stuff, you know, via PayPal. I'm assuming it's pretty similar in the statue game. Now, as it pertains to transactions, how do you go about recommending facilitating these deals? Yeah, definitely. It's kind of similar in that sense. You definitely don't want to send PayPal friends and family payments to people that you don't know and don't trust. I mean, I know it sounds like a common sense thing for a lot of people, but for some people it isn't. And a lot of people get scammed in this hobby. I don't know what it is about the statute community, but there seems to be a lot of people that are trying to rip people off. So you definitely want to make sure you're sending as goods and services. And I would even be leery about like Craigslist uh, and, and Facebook meetups, man. You got to be careful when you're dealing with like you know thousands of dollars. That's right. I mean, with delicate statues, so many things can go wrong from how they were shipped to how they were presented in the listing in the first place. 
you know what that's a great point too because when you send friends and family if it comes broken there's really no protection on your end and that also goes for selling you got to be careful who you sell to because they could send a goods and services transaction get the statue and then file a claim and state otherwise or they could file a credit card chargeback so really you can't just sell to anybody either you should really be vouching for buyers and sellers so something i've been dying to find out i recently got this hellboy statue and didn't know that it was actually like limited i thought they made these in bulk but it actually says it's 175 out of 333 addition okay. sizes how does that affect the market and what should people be thinking about that's a really good question actually and that's a pretty low addition size addition size matter because the more there is of something the less valuable it becomes and i don't want to make it seem like you're buying statues with the intent to sell them but it's kind of nice knowing that you bought something that's limited and that's at least holding its value all right, so then considering that information, I got to ask, I know that pre-ordering is a pretty large part of how collectors acquire these statues. So as it pertains to addition size, any recommendations on that time you have to pre-order the statue? Yeah, 100%. The statue game is all a waiting game. Everything is based on pre-order for stuff that comes out six to nine months later. So there are some tips and practices when it comes to addition size. When you're talking sideshow collectibles, they like to put out a piece where you can pre-order it and they don't announce the addition size until later on. They're trying to gauge what the interest is because the more the interest, the higher the addition size is going to be. And that's a bad thing. You don't really want a limited collectible item with the 5,000 ES because that means that it's probably going to be readily available through Sideshow forever. So if you ever do want to sell your piece, you're going to take a loss on it. Now with XM Studios, they have a different business model. With them, you really have to pre-order, otherwise you're going to miss out. They have a made-to-order business model where however many pre-orders come in, that's however many they make. And for a lot of great pieces, they've had really low addition sizes because of that model. So you're bringing up some large companies. Personally, I trust buying from them. Something that I've been a little weary of is like the custom statue game. I don't even understand how that works. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand how it works. It's a very tight-knit community with customs. Now, if you're in those type of circles, you want to be leery about pre-ordering a custom statue based off of the render alone. Unless they're like a well-known commissioner or they've produced pieces before, if this guy comes out of the woodworks and shows you a render and he starts taking pre-orders, dude, help, one, me, out, help me out, man. I don't do me a favor. I I'm dumb. I don't know what a render is. Help me out with uh, what does that mean? A render is a 3D sculpt, a oh, 3D okay, okay. sculpt which is given to the factory, and that's what they use to produce the statue. Uh, okay, makes a lot of sense. If it's an unknown person or somebody who doesn't have a reputation in the community. You don't know if they're even going to deliver on that piece or if they're going to use a factory that's not going to really produce a statue to your liking or maybe even the right scale. We've seen some that have been undersized. There's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're putting $300, $500 towards just a 3D render rather than seeing a final product. Wow, so much risk. It's basically like a Kickstarter just with way higher stakes and the result you may not be happy with. A totally accurate analogy. It is like a Kickstarter. It's basically like, let's get enough money based on this 3D sculpt to produce the physical piece. And if it's not, if it's somebody who doesn't know what they're doing or has never done it before, you're taking a big risk. So the next one on the list I had texted you about because it was something that really pulled me out of investing and purchasing statues is that you have to know your plan of where you're going to put these things and also consider if you have kids or animals. My yeah. cat's knocked over every one of my statues, including <laughs> uh, my, my buddy Ryan, who not only knocked over my lion cat statue, it's like I have to watch my guests and I got to watch my animals. And I mean, you know, no offense. I know you're a cat lover, but cats are evil. They will <laughs> maliciously push over a statue on purpose. And you're right. You got to think about where are you going to put these things? A lot of times we buy more statues than we buy shelving units. And then we're kind of like rushing a display that ends up looking sloppy or not having enough headspace for a piece because it ends up being 31 inches and, you, and your shelves are only going to 28 inches. There's a lot to consider with where are you going to put these things. Oh, man. The last thing you want to do is have like thousands of dollars in awesome statues and then to just watch them get tumbled over one by one because you just didn't think to put a barrier in front of it or something yeah man for that's a good point okay so then since we're kind of talking about broken statues what's your advice on that because i feel like whenever i'm shopping on ebay 
those are the ones that are like affordable, but I don't know if I should commit and if it's even worth doing. So if you think that you're going to buy a statue and you're never going to sell it, I see it all the time. Oh, I don't care. I'm never going to sell this piece. All right, cool. You can buy a broken statue if it's something that you can live with. But chances are you're not going to take the statue to the grave and you're going to probably get rid of it one day. And if you buy broken statues, it's going to be very hard to move those pieces. Whoever you bought it from, you just did them a huge favor because it's so hard to get rid of those. I would say avoid it. Practice some patience, like I mentioned before, and, and just don't buy one that's broken. There's rarely a big enough discount that makes it worth it, in my opinion. Hearing that I'm doing someone else a favor by helping them offload something that's damaged makes me really weary to buy that type of product. I'm curious, any other types of statues I should be avoiding? Yo, for whatever reason, video game statues always depreciate in value. This statue is more of a comic book statue community and like a movie statue community. When you get into video games, every Street Fighter piece I've ever bought, every Mortal Kombat piece I've ever bought, people were doing me a favor when they took it off my hands. Yo, I had this Kentaro statue, quarter scale, awesome piece, but I just didn't want to collect Mortal Kombat anymore. I couldn't sell this for the life of me. And this was an amazing piece, man. I really couldn't even give it away. And it's, it's just such a shame, I guess, because the statue community is just there's such a smaller market for video game pieces. They just always depreciate. Before we get to this next one, let's make sure the Geminites know how they can enter to win this dope comic book. Thor number one from South Africa. Yeah, this is a super limited comic, an awesome run. Donny Cates is killing it. So we already did a video on Tom's channel where you could enter. This is your opportunity for a second entry or your first one if, if you didn't see Tom's video. You got to be subscribed to the channel. You also got to jump over to Comic Tom 101, give him a subscription as well, and then comment down below Comic Tom giveaway. And what we're going to do is we're going to randomize both video comment lists and come up with a winner for the next time that we do a video together. I make a lot of comic book themed content over on my channel, and we're also doing videos just like this one over there. So come by and say hi. And then also slap that like button for us. We need the comic book and statue community support. All right, and then what do we got as the next thing we have to avoid doing when buying expensive statues? Keep your damn boxes. Oh, yes. Every <laughs> single one. I don't one. That you're never going to sell a piece. You don't know if you're going to move. Are you in your final house? Are you, are you in your dream house? You might move. You might sell a piece, even though we don't buy these things with the intent to sell, but our tastes change. Sometimes we focus our collection and say, you know what? I'm just going to hone in on X-Men, or I'm just going to hone in on Batman villains. You don't think you're going to sell, but it happens to almost all of us. You have to keep your styrofoam, your art box, your shipper box. Otherwise, you're going to greatly depreciate the value of your piece and make it really hard for you to ship it if it comes down to it. Yeah, near impossible to ship statues in any other way without really potentially damaging them. Yeah, 100%. And guys, if we're spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on statues, if you don't have a garage, you might as well get you a storage unit to put your boxes in there. I mean, it's not that expensive and relative to what we're spending on the actual piece. So if you don't have a garage, I recommend just getting one of those small units. That's some good advice. And I appreciate you going through some of these with me because I'm just starting to get back into it. I'm curious if any Geminites are buying any statues right now. I know they are, but I'm curious like what they're looking at. Maybe in the comment section, they can let me know. Yeah, for sure. And also let us know if you're guilty of any of these on there. I think I'm guilty of every single one, except the boxes thing. I never got rid of a box. So let us know in the comments below. Hit the like button. Like I say, hit the sub on both of our channels and uh, hit that comic time giveaway in the comments if you want to be entered into this drawing. We appreciate you guys watching. Stay minty fresh. That's right. Geek responsibly. Geminites. Peace. What's up, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I have a special guest in here. Man. <laughs> Today, I have a special guest with me, Tom. Tom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We about to make some magic. <laughs> make sure you can see Dr. Manhattan's bulge. There we go. That's what we need. <laughs> I almost broke it. I think I just broke it. Did I break it? Addition size is important because the more there is of something of <laughs> before we get to this next one here. All right. Before we get Go to ahead. this next before we get to this next one, let's make sure the cut. <laughs>